All right, hi, you're 11. This is Mr. Lim here, and this is our seventh video on chemical bonding, on covalent molecular bonding. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to be learning about the properties and how those of the atomic structure of covalent molecular substances determine their properties. All right, so first of all, we always have to start off with electronegativity and understanding that we're dealing with non metal elements here. Okay, so you should remember that um, metals or metallic bonding is only dealing with metals. We should remember where ionic bonding is metal and non-metal. And then covalent molecular bonding is effectively just non-metals and how they bond to each other. Okay, And what makes non-metals non-metals is that they have high electronegativities. That's the characteristic that gives them uh, non-metal uh, non elements uh, their properties. Okay, And they have high first ionization energies, which means that they... Um, are, uh, yeah, they um, they require a lot of energy to remove their first uh, electron. All right, this means that they hold on to their electrons very strongly, okay, and they are unlikely to give them up, okay, unlikely to give them up. So if they're unlikely to give them up, right, so unlike the metals where they can just like, you know, give them up into a sea of delocalized electrons, or unlike the ionic substances where the metal gives to the non-metal, if um, if you're not likely to give them up, then what they're going to do is that they end up sharing electrons, but not in the same way that metals do, where they give them all up. But what they're going to do is that they're going to share them within, between two particular atoms and hold them um, close. All right, but if they share them between two atoms, it still allows them to complete their p orbitals. Okay, so the idea is that they're sharing, but not in the same way that metals are sharing. Okay, so let's go move on. Um, the shared electrons are pulled by electrostatic attractions strongly by mo both nuclei. Okay, so the shared electrons are pulled electrostatic attractions strongly sh both nuclei of the two non-metal atoms. Okay, so effectively, the two electro or the electrons are being pulled by the two nuclei on either end. Okay, and so they are shared between them. All right, this. Uh, creates a bond called a covalent bond, right? And it's also known as an intramolecular force. Intra meaning inside, and molecules are molecular force, so intra meaning inside the molecule forces, right? Atoms for can form covalent bonds with multiple other atoms to form small groups of atoms and have their uh, all have their outermost energy level p orbitals full, right? And these small groups of atoms are called molecules. Okay, so the idea is that you might have, uh, you know, anywhere up to 10, 15, 20 uh, atoms or more all joined together with these covalent bonds. And then um, they make small those small groups called molecules, all right? So molecules, all right, they're overall neutrally charged. Okay, why are they neutrally charged? Because they haven't gained or lost electrons overall. They're sharing electrons, but they still have the same number of elect uh, electrons to protons. Okay, so there's no imbalance between uh, positive and negative charges. All right, because there's no overall charge, uh, that means that there is little or very weak attraction between small molecules. Okay, so in other words, uh, there's no overall charge. There's no electrostatic attraction uh, like we know with the metallic or the ionic substances, and therefore they have very weak bonds that hold them together. And those attractions are non-directional for the most part. All right. These attractions between these attractions between between molecules, not within the molecule, but between them, are called van der Waals forces, and we'll be dealing with those later in the course. All right. And so therefore you would describe the structure of covalent molecular substances as discrete, which means individual molecules which have very strong covalent or intramolecular bonds, but weak non-directional van der Waals forces between molecules or intermolecular bonds. Okay, so um, that's the description for uh, covalent molecular substances. All right. So how does that affect their properties? So let's have a look. So first of all, malleability. They are generally malleable. Okay, so... Covalent molecular substances have a large range because how they uh, arrange themselves into those small groups um, can vary greatly. And so therefore, uh, we can't say all of them have these properties, but they're generally more malleable um, 
and this is due to the non-directional van der Waals forces between the molecules, okay? So it's again that non-directional idea so that uh, if you move the atoms, the bonding between them still exists, and so therefore, even though it's weak, um, because they're van der Waals forces, they are generally malleable. But that's not true for all things. There are some structures that can have brittle structures, okay? So things like ice, all right? Ice, even though it's made out of discrete molecules with a relatively weak van der Waals forces, they are brittle because of the way that the uh, molecules line up, and we'll go through that deeper um, later on when we study water in more depth. But generally, they are malleable, okay? Um, electrical conductivity, uh, they are electrical insulators in both in all solid, molten, liquid, or aqueous forms. Okay, so they're insulators. Why? Because there's a lack of charged particles, right? These molecules are all neutral, and so therefore they can't act as m mobile charge carriers. They're just missing the charge part. They can be mobile, but they're not charged. And so therefore, both in solid and molten, liquid, aqueous forms, they are uh, all not conductive of electricity. And then finally, they have a low melting and boiling point, Okay. This is because there is a weak van der Waals forces or intermolecular forces, so they do not require a large amount of energy to break apart. Okay, And when I say break apart, I mean break apart two molecules, so bring one molecule away from another, Okay, not breaking a molecule in half. Okay, So not breaking a molecule in half because that takes a lot of energy, lots of energy, and this would be effectively a chemical reaction, right? But this one here, where you're moving two molecules apart, requires little energy to perform that uh, thing, so therefore it occurs at a low temperature, all right? So making sure we recognize this as intermolecular forces, uh, not intramolecular forces. Inter, not intramolecular forces. Okay, and that's why they have low melting and boiling points. That's all. Adios.